yo, 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 when kings talk, the conversation different, but you already know that, baby. I'm your host, OG Wheeler in 23, Mr. Jamie Foxx. He then came out and said P. Diddy Combs then tried to unalive him. I thought he was sick. I thought he had the flu. I don't know what's going on in Hollywood. Maybe y'all can help me figure it out. But Mr. Jamie Foxx said P. Diddy tried to take him out the game because he was trying to expose what was going on at his parties. What is going on with Mr. P. Diddy Combs? He got Mr. T.D. Jakes all in these scandals. Now his church empty. Mr. P. Diddy been real quiet lately too if you pay attention. He ain't came to nobody's offense. He trying to save himself and his wealth. But Mr. Jamie Foxx said that P. Diddy tried to take him out the game. Don't let me take me out, sir. I'm good. Don't let me take me out, sir. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all, it looks like people are not about to let up on Diddy because more and more stories are starting to come out about him. And girl, they are not nice things. First off, we have Jamie Foxx who is now coming out to reveal that his medical emergency last year was not actually a medical emergency, but Diddy was actually trying to unalive him. See, in the weeks leading up to his supposed emergency, Jamie had been talking a lot about Diddy's secret activities in his gay parties and exposed Diddy for being on the DL. But that's not all, because the streets are now saying that another reason that Diddy tried to unalive Jamie is that he decided that he no longer wanted to be a part of Diddy's freak off. But Diddy was not having that, so he decided to clap back. But Jamie is not the only one who's coming out to expose Diddy because Cat Williams is also coming out to talk about how Diddy tried to seduce him and get him into his bed. And when that didn't work, Diddy allegedly tried to S.A. him. Y'all, there is a lot going on here because Jamie and Cat are spilling some seriously spicy tea. Huh. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if J.D. ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupree. King of the out if you ask me, baby. Jermaine Dupree, small as a child. Okay, so y'all need to get on this tea right away because there is a lot of crazy drama going on. Just when we thought we had heard the last of Diddy's freak off, Jamie Foxx is now coming out to reveal that Diddy allegedly tried to kill him for refusing to take part in a freak off. Y'all remember how Jamie suddenly and mysteriously had a medical emergency last year? Well, as it turns out, it wasn't exactly mysterious because Jamie is now coming out to claim that Diddy allegedly tried to unalive him for refusing to take part in his freak off. During Jamie's hospitalization, his family had been tight lipped about the real details of his hospitalization. And you know how it is when things are kept hush hush. It usually means something's up. And in this case, that something seemed to revolve around none other than Diddy. We all heard about Jamie Foxx being a regular at Diddy's infamous wild parties, and just before he disappeared, he spilled a bean, sharing some jaw-dropping insights into what really went down behind the closed doors of Diddy's lavish gathering. I'm talking crazy pool parties, extravagant spending, drugs, and some seriously eyebrow-raising activities. It was enough to leave fans in shock. For those who've been keeping their ears to the street, Diddy's parties are legendary, with rumors about all sorts of wild shenanigans circulating for ages. But it's not just about popping bottles and tearing up the dance floor. According to the grapevine, there's a whole other level of craziness happening behind those VIP doors. We're talking orgies. And not just any orgies, but ones involving male rappers and allegedly even some underage boys in certain instances. It's a bit mind-boggling when you really think about it, but hey, it's Diddy we're talking about, and whispers of him being involved in such things have been circulating for decades. Allegedly. Recently, Diddy has been in the headlines for some messy business with his ex, Cassie, and her lawsuit. That's what opened up the can of worms for him. What's wild is Cassie's claim that Diddy used to record these wild escapades, kind of like what Jamie Foxx claims to do with these Diddy parties. He used to hit up. Rumor has it that Diddy allegedly pulled some shady moves with young artists at these parties, pushing them into doing some questionable stuff. And guess who had a front row seat of it all? Jamie Foxx, the party regular who used to be there before he mysteriously got sick and almost lost his life. Now, Jamie has always dropped hints about the craziness at these parties, even if he didn't spill all the deets. He once gave a sneak peek into the madness of Diddy's fashion, and get this, he even claimed that Diddy once put him in charge of recording all the sketchy activities going down at the party. At that time, Puff was the biggest guy in the world. You know, you couldn't even get this part, so the way I'm getting this part is I show it with the camera. Puff, yo, you gotta let me film this, the whole thing, we need to document this place. But before we get into Jamie's shocking revelation, can we take a moment to talk about how multiple people have accused Diddy of allegedly trying to force them into freak-offs, and how he would lose his mind when they turned him down? Diddy's former artist, Mace, 
weren't you to the trying to force him into a freak up when he was signed to Diddy's bad boy record. And allegedly, this is what really led to Mace's issues with Diddy, eventually causing him to leave the label. And as it turns out, Mace and Diddy didn't quite end their professional relationship on good terms because Diddy refused to pay Mace what he owed. And when Mace tried to get his money back, Diddy started bad-mouthing Mace, making it impossible for Mace to work in the industry. And it's wild that this all started because of a rejected freak off. You know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then you became a fake pastor? And went and con people? Then there's also 50 Cent and how he has always put his back into exposing Diddy. 50 Cent has been on Diddy's case forever, being one of the first to spill the tea on Diddy's behind the scenes action. And when I say spill the tea, I mean he didn't hold anything back. Straight up calling Diddy sexuality and dropping pics that set the internet on fire. He's been throwing his memes and pictures on all his socials, taking shots at Diddy for what feels like an eternity. Remember that one time he posted a pic of Diddy and Rick Ross looking like they were locking lips with a caption, something ain't right? Classic 50 Cent move. Now, I'm not one to judge anyone's lifestyle, but 50 Cent's got this knack for making us all sit up and pay attention. It's like he's a hip hop detective digging into Diddy's moves and he's been relentless about it. Take, for instance, the time he dropped this bomb. I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are now left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. 50 has also tried to call attention to Diddy's party because he accused Diddy of allegedly S.A. young men at the party. He wrote, see this is why I don't go to no party Puffy and M.A is going on here? Get the F off my young man, WTF. Now, Diddy has been catching heat lately from some young guys who once saw him as a mentor in the entertainment biz. Among those speaking out are familiar faces like rapper YK Osiris, actor Orlando Brown, and Empire actor Bryce Sheer Gray. These dudes used to look up to Diddy, thinking he'd be the key to their success in the industry. Little did they know that Diddy wasn't handing out free passes. Take Bryce Sheer Gray, for example. He got introduced to Diddy through his manager, Charlie Mack, who got him a role on Empire. But deep down, Bryce Sheer wanted to be a rapper. So, Charlie Mack linked him up with Will Smith, who then brought him into Diddy's circle. Now, considering the rumors about Will being a frequent guest at Diddy's wild parties, you can connect the dots. Word on the street is that when Bryce Shear decided to step away from the wild scene, Diddy allegedly blackballed him, which explains why we haven't seen much of Bryce Shear post-Empire. But these are not the only stars that may have fallen prey to Diddy's weird fantasy. We also have Diddy's mentee, Usher, who was exposed to all manners of things when he lived with Diddy from the age of 13. Now, Usher has been hinting for years at some weird things went down with him and Diddy, but he didn't come right out to say it, for obvious reasons. In an interview with Howard Stern, Howard asked Usher if Diddy's place was filled with girls, and Usher replied that he saw some interesting things while he lived with Diddy. The place was like, just filled with chicks and orgy and like non-stop, right? No, well, not really. I come mean, on. but there, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. But that's not all, because Diddy has also been suspected to have gotten inappropriate with Justin. He sent off red flags during his 48 Hours with Diddy segment with Justin Bieber, where he claimed that he and Justin could could never tell anyone what they were up to. Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, we'll be hanging out and we'll be doing um, we, we can't really disclose. And as a reward for Justin keeping his mouth shut, Diddy promised him a Ferrari for his 16th birthday. As soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? Let's drop this every time. And before we get past that, he jumped right into promising to give Justin a mansion for his 18th birthday. Then, when you get 18, you get the house. You get the mansion. Yeah, that was us on so many levels, but there's still more because we have this video of Justin doing something to Odo Beckham Jr. at one many allegations that have been made against him. But yeah, y'all probably catch the drift on that by now. But as bad as those allegations are, we're about to get way worse because word on the street is that Jane Fox is willing and ready to testify against Diddy, claiming that Diddy allegedly tried to unalive him last year because he said that he was no longer interested in the freak-offs or Diddy's wild parties. In case y'all forgot about the drama that went down with Jane's health last year, he suddenly and mysteriously suffered a medical emergency on the set of a movie. For some reason, his family kept the details of his sickness private, but his daughter, Corinne, released a statement on behalf of the family saying, from the Fox family, we wanted to share that my father, Jamie Fox, experienced a medical complication yesterday. Luckily, due to quick action and great care, he is already on his way to recovery. We know how beloved he is and appreciate your prayers. The family asks for privacy during this time. The family claims that there was nothing serious 
security is going on, but several people in the industry who seem to be in the know kind of hinted that he was the victim of an attack. For example, Steve Harvey said, I don't even really know what happened, man. I was just stunned because Jamie's fit. This dude, he don't do nothing, man. This dude is fit. So I was concerned, man. So I hope everything works out. I'm pretty sure it will. Martin Lawrence also said, I mean, I wish him the best. He's in my prayers every night. He's not only one of our best entertainers we have out here, but he's a great person and he's a genuine person. So please pray for him. Nia Long also tweeted, My heart is heavy this morning. Pray for our brother Jamie Foxx. My love and prayers run deep for you and your loved ones. Hashtag prayer for Jamie Foxx. Yeah, there was definitely something going on because there's no way Martin Lawrence, Steve Harvey, and Nia Long were chasing the clout with such a sensitive matter. Things took a bizarre turn when rumors spread that the cops paid a visit to Jamie in the hospital. According to sources, Jamie allegedly spilled the beans to law enforcement, claiming that his ordeal wasn't just an accident. Someone had intentionally tried to harm him. A source filled the tea saying, Jamie Foxx told the cops somebody is trying to kill him. I'm telling you, man, it's like they have a timer of these celebs' lives. I believe him. Before you know it, fingers started pointing at Diddy, accusing him of possibly being the mastermind behind Jamie's medical scare. The grapevine suggests that Diddy might be coming after Jamie because he confirmed that Diddy used to both attend and host some wild parties back in the day, where shady stuff went down and Jamie planned to have recordings to prove it. In Cassie's lawsuit, she spoke about how Diddy often tried to unalive his ops and take them out permanently. She said, for example, on one occasion, one of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Cone, was spotted at Mel's drive in diner in Los Angeles. Mr. Combs began to get dressed, retrieve multiple guns from a safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dying. She also claimed that Diddy allegedly tried to unalive Kid Cudi because he found out that Cassie had been dating Kid Cudi after she left him. She said, Mr. Combs told Miss Ventura that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. For the next couple of weeks, the situation got weirder because we got so many different updates about his health, and it was like they couldn't get their story straight. Straight. On one hand, there would be more updates saying stuff like, he's okay, thank God. He's still in the hospital and doctors are running tests, but he's awake and alert. They're keeping him under observation. But the next thing we knew, there would be an update about how his health had taken a turn and his family was fearing for the worst. Well, according to an insider, Diddy was allegedly the one pulling the strings behind the scenes because he wanted to teach Jamie a lesson for trying to reveal his secrets and also for dumping him. But hold up, because this is where the tea gets spicy. See, according to an insider, Jamie allegedly not only used to be a big H.O.E. back in the 90s, but he was also bisexual. So back in the 90s, my mom nicknamed Jamie Foxx. Like, if you take the O out of his name and replace it with a U, that's what she used to call him. But to his face, it's like a ha-ha joke because he used to bang so many guys and girls in Hollywood. But that's not even the juiciest part of the story because her next revelation is shocking. And he's having a thing called Bunny in basketball games, okay? He would invite over a lot of like Hollywood elite to his house for a basketball game, but it was men only. And they would be like, oh, we're just gonna get naked and play basketball. Like, oh, ha ha. Together, which is weird and this happened in the 90s i don't know about y'all but playing basketball without clothes is just downright bizarre i mean we could understand playing shirtless but playing without any clothes at all is just wild and it kind of suggests that there was way more than basketball going on in those parties i mean come on this is interesting because one of Diddy's former bodyguards has exposed him for attending gay parties kind of similar to this the math is starting to math but hold up because she my good sis still had a lot more tea to spill a lot of your like favorite celebrities were there including someone who may or may not been married to someone who was drinking that lemonade if you want to know like who was probably at these games just look at like who p diddy and jamie fox have been hanging around for years especially the like the super successful ones usher was definitely there According to an insider, Diddy took it as a double insult that Jamie not only opted out of the freak off, but also tried to expose him. Diddy wasn't having it with the double insult, and allegedly, he decided to teach Jamie a lesson not to mess with him. Another insider also claimed that Jamie's family realized that there was someone powerful behind these mysterious sicknesses, and that's why they kept the whole illness under wraps. Rumor has it that the family stayed tight-lipped because they were scared of putting Jamie in more danger. You know the deal. Hollywood's like a real-life chess game. One wrong move, and you could be the next big headline. Plus, if if Diddy wasn't really involved like the rumor suggests, nobody wants to be caught up on the wrong side of that drama. So instead of risking it all and exposing Diddy, they played it smart, protecting themselves while still throwing us in 
enough to keep the rumor mill churning. Y'all know the fans don't play about Jamie, and they had all the smoke for Diddy, saying stuff like, Diddy just nasty as hell, and he needs to be punished for it. He destroyed them young guys' lives. Put him in jail. Usher not going to say anything about Diddy, because he knows what would probably happen to him. And Jamie is telling on himself, whatsoever he saw going on, he was there for it repeatedly. Why would he keep going to those type of parties if he wasn't with it himself? If I was invited to a party and I didn't know it would be full of crack addicts, I wouldn't stay there or ever go back. It's crazy how saying no to someone can have such serious consequences, but as it turns out, Jamie was not the only one who said no to Diddy, because according to Cat Williams, he also turned Diddy down when Diddy tried to get down with him and make him his partner, if you know what I mean. Just so we're clear, I'm not trying to bash Diddy or judge him for like a man, but reports have it that he goes about it the wrong way. I mean, according to Cassie, he literally pimped her out to male escorts and watched her get intimate with the men for his pleasure. He even forced her to hire male escorts that were tailor-made to his own personal preferences, and he would give her things to look out for in the escorts, like a BBC. According to his bodyguard, Gene, the reason Diddy was so specific with this is that he was making Cassie hire the escorts for him and not her. Gene claimed that Cassie left out a lot of things in the lawsuit, like the fact that Diddy was allegedly involved in the free golf and wasn't just a bystander like Cassie made him seem. Child, if there is one thing that Gene is going to do, it's spill tea on Diddy, and it kind of seems like he doesn't particularly like Diddy that much, and who can blame him? If the things that have been said about Diddy are at all true, then it would explain why Gene seems to dislike Diddy so much, and is always trying to expose him. And it's not like he's riding on the coattails of Cassie's lawsuit, because he has been exposing Diddy long before Cassie ever thought of filing her lawsuit. Anywho, back to Cat Williams. Because he also has tales of his escapades with Diddy. And at this point, it's getting harder and harder to find someone in the industry who was not propositioned by Diddy. We've known for years that Diddy is a womanizer and keeps a lot of women at the same time, even when he was in relationships. But girl, it started to look like he didn't discriminate genders and he kept just as many men on the side as he did women. However, I'm not going to lie. I kind of find it wild that he would choose to be all flirty with Cat Williams and try to get him into his bed. Because we all know that Cat is not about that life. I'm not saying that Cat is homophobic or anything like that, but come on, y'all. Everyone knows the cat is the last person you go to if you want to keep something hush-hush. It's not that he can't keep a secret, because I'm sure that he has plenty of secrets of his own, but he has made it super clear over the years that he really, really hates the shady things that go down in the industry. He is one of the very few actors that have consistently called out the dark side of Hollywood, including the Illuminati, and yes, gay men who are on the DL and consistently prey on younger men in the industry. So if Diddy knows this, why on earth would he try to seduce Cat to get him in his bed? It's like he was begging to be exposed or something because Cat is the last person that he should have tried to proposition. And it's not just about Cat exposing the dark side of Hollywood because he has never been Diddy's biggest fan. And he's exposed Diddy's shady side from the start. And again, this has nothing to do with Cassie and her lawsuit because Cat has been spilling tea on Diddy and his inappropriate relationship with young boys. In an old interview, Cat hinted that Diddy and Jermaine Dupri had allegedly essayed the Chris Cross boys. If you don't know who that is, I'm referring to Chris Kelly and Chris Smith, two young boys who were discovered by Jermaine Dupri in the 90s. Chris Cross was an instant success, and both boys became stars at only 12 and 13 years old. But unfortunately, the industry got its hands on them, and things went sideways for them because the streets are claiming that Jermaine allegedly saved them. The sad thing is that the boys actually had their suspicions about Jermaine from the moment they met him. In an old interview, Chris Kelly said, we were just playing video games in this mall in Atlanta when, all of a sudden, this dude comes up to us and said he'd like for us to work with him as rap musicians. We had no idea who he was. In fact, I told Mac Daddy that I thought this guy was probably a child yeah, he basically just looked at us all funny. And it looks like Kat was aware of the rumors of Diddy and Jermaine allegedly as saying the boys because back in 2011, Kat dropped a freestyle where he threw shade at numerous industry folks. You know, normal stuff about them being bad rappers, blah, blah, blah. But when it came to Diddy and Jermaine, he had some very specific words to say about them. Come. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of the if you ask me, baby. Jermaine Dupree, small as a child. That was just way too specific for Kat to have been messing around, and it kind of ties up with the room. Plus, Kat isn't the type of person to joke with such a sensitive issue, and this is why fans believe that he was referring to the allegations about Jermaine Dupree and Diddy allegedly as saying the Chris Cross boys. But there's more there, because the streets are saying that Jermaine and Diddy allegedly had this weird agreement where they both allegedly pimped out their artists to each other. G. Deal also confirmed this, saying that he heard Diddy making plans to pimp out his artists, including his girl group, Danny Kane. Yeah, that's messed up on so many levels. 
So like I said, why on earth did Diddy try to proposition Cat? Knowing that Cat loves to spill the tea and he doesn't like him. It's like he was trying to get exposed or something. Anywho, Cat recently had an interview where he spilled some really spicy tea about Diddy, claiming that Diddy tried to seduce him and get him into his bed. And when that didn't work, Diddy offered him $50 million for a one night stand. Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just, just to protect, protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got him telling no. And you got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipt for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can say I'm so free. Yeah, if Diddy was willing to pay $50 million for a one night stand with Cat, then he was super desperate to hit, which is why. And at this point, I can't help but wonder how many other men in the industry he either propositioned or actually slept with. And it's crazy. Fans actually believe Cat, and they're standing with him, leaving comments like, Cat has been exposing these vile creatures. In three of his stand up shows from about 15 to 20 years back, he talks about what these Hollywood stars get up to. Cat is the unrivaled king of comedy and champion of truth. This other person said, Cat has been exposing Hollywood, but people call him crazy. He told us about those parties in Hollywood. A lot of your favorite actors and musicians are involved in some sinister stuff, especially involving children. A lot of people are not ready for the truth. And another person said, Cat has been telling the truth for over two decades now, and everybody just called him crazy and tried to have him blacklisted and destroy his reputation and character throughout the years so they could make him shut up and go away, but Cat took a licking and kept on coming back. Yeah, that's messed up big time, and I don't think that the stories about Diddy are going to die down anytime soon, because more and more people are going to keep speaking up. But in the meantime, y'all let me know how you feel about Jamie Foxx claiming that Diddy tried to unalive him, and Cat's story about Diddy trying to get him in his bed. Man, all I want to know is what's really going on out there in Hollywood. I mean, the year just started, and Cat Williams done went out. Now, Jamie Foxx is saying that P. Diddy tried to unalive him for exposing what go on at the parties. I mean, I thought Jamie Foxx had a stroke or something. I thought he had pneumonia or the flu. But it turns out, he's saying that P. Diddy tried to take him out. I want to know like y'all want to know. Maybe we can figure this thing out together, man. When Keens talk, the conversation different. I used to be trying to get to the bottom of it, like what's really going on. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and that notification bell for you get an update every time I drop the juicy juice. When Keens talk, the conversation different, but you already know that, baby.